Hi, and welcome to Motion Matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to do a little something a little different. Instead of looking at the actual plugin, we're going to look at how we can clean up our animation route uh, so that it's more stable and it works much better with motion matching. Now, this is something that's more going to be useful for mocap users that have long takes made for motion matching. However, if you're using cut clips, it may be useful for some animations like fast accelerations or 180 turns where you really want to have a stable route that doesn't waggle. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So let's have a look at this animation here. And the root animation we can see by this ring with the blue arrow. So if we watch it, you see that blue arrow kind of waggles a little bit. Now in this particular animation, it's not too bad. That wouldn't really cause much of an issue. However, it can get really bad, especially if your character is sprinting, um, it will waggle quite a lot. Another thing we'll notice is that when we get to the 180 turn, You'll notice how it's not a very consistent turn. It kind of gets a bit of the way there and then the, le the rest is just sort of uh, over time. Now, while this may be realistic, it's not very good for our trajectory generator because remember, we want, to, um, we want to match our trajectory generator to root, mo root animation trajectories uh, that are stable because it's really almost impossible to predict a root that is as human as that, um, you know, not turning consistently. So we want to have a consistent turn and we also want it to be relatively stable. Um, the other thing is that the uh, Motion Matching for Unity's trajectory error warping, which makes sure that we always run in the direction we want, will fight the waggle and actually make it worse. So you really do need this stable clip. Uh, the stable root motion. Now with cut clips, a lot of the time you just bake the root rotation, so it's not a problem. However, if you're going to have lots and lots of turns in a single take, you can't do that. Uh, unfortunately, Unity doesn't allow having different settings at different parts of a clip for calculating the root. So let's have a look at what we really want. And this is one that I've already done. And we can see here when we play, that blue arrow stays, arrow stays perfectly straight. And when we get to the 180, it just turns around really, really nicely. Okay, so let's hop into Blender and actually do this. Now, a bit of a caveat here, I am not an animator. I'm an animation programmer. An animator probably knows a better way of doing this and plenty of people probably know a better way of doing this, but this does work. And um, so I thought I'd just pop this in here. So let's go to Blender and I'm just gonna uh, select everything and delete it. And we can import our animation file, import, FBX and I just got that path before and it's this one. Now obviously this animation wasn't made in Blender so the bones are all over the place and they're all facing upwards. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to really deal with that. Um, keep in mind also that it's going to how you do this is going to depend slightly on the how the armature is set up. Obviously we've got this bone in the middle which is the armature and then there's all the other bones coming off it. Now we need an animated root, a custom animated root. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the hips. And if I go down this hierarchy, reference hips. Okay, we're going to duplicate these hips and we need to be in edit mode. So at the top left here, uh, let's select the hips. And I'm just going to hit uh, shift D. And we've got our hip duplicate. What is going on with my mouse? Oh. I'm going to redo that because I think I rotated it. Shift uh, D and right click. And let's rename this um, custom root. Now I'm going to move it down to the bottom. So GZ. And we can actually open this up. And I want the head to be at 0. 0.0. And let's make the tail at just move the tail out the back here. You can see I'm not an animator because I'm not really too fast at this. Um, and we're going to set the roll to zero to get that nicely. Okay, so now we've got a root and it's it might not be directly below the hips at the moment. We need to first add a constraint because we don't want to manually add a, animate the position. Let's just copy the position. So if we select our bone that we've created, we can go to, uh, we need to go into pose mode actually. I'm just going to set it back to here. 
and let's go to the constraints tab here, add bone constraint, and we're going to choose a uh, copy location. And from this target, we're going to choose the armature and the bone, we're going to choose the hips. Okay, but it's popped up back there, so I don't want to copy the Z rotation. Now let's just hit play. And we can see our bone follows. Of course, it doesn't turn. And this is where we have to actually animate it. But don't worry, it's going to take two keys. It's really easy. But we set up our constraint. So let's hit here and go to the dope sheet. I'm just going to go up. And we'll just click this button here to get the summary. And let's find the point where our character turns around. I'm going to say starts turning. It's a little bit hard to see because of the how the uh, bones import, but we can sort of get an idea. Starting here, I'm going to right click, insert keyframe, uh, rotation, and then we're going to finish. We've fully turned around at this point, and I'm going to select that, rotate it, so R, Y, no, not Y, RZ, 180. And right click, insert keyframe, rotation. Now we can see we have this consistent turn that's consistent throughout the turn. So if we play this now, um, where's my play key? I'll go to animator, animation mode. We see we have a really stable route that has a consistent turn and it's all the way back. So there we have it. And it's also, um, one thing we note is it stays along the zero point, which doesn't go up and down, which is really good. So we can export this, and I think we're going to have a problem when we export it, but we'll figure that out in a second. But I want to show you this because it can be a problem when taking things from Blender into Unity, they use different coordinate systems. So we'll go File, Export, FBX, um, and let's just select Armature. We don't want to actually export anything else. We only need the Armature. Um, leave these settings as is, geometry, don't worry about that, armature, we'll leave that all as is. And let's navigate to the project, where is my project? And I'm gonna override the one, you can. You don't have to override it, I'm just doing that. I'm gonna automatically re-import. And we can see, okay, so here we are. Now it's obviously still having the waggle, but that's because we haven't set it up in the import settings yet, we need to go to motion down the bottom for our animation and we need to choose this um, so armature reference custom root. There's our custom root. We can pick it and apply that. Now you're going to notice, as I said, there's going to be issues. It's going to be running vertically and we don't want this at all. Now I played with the export settings on Blender for quite a while to try and figure this out. I couldn't figure it out. So if anybody else knows, I'd be happy to let. Uh, I'd be happy if you could let me know. However, I did fix it. Um, the final result by rotating this guy. So I'm just going to select this starting point, and I'm going to hit Shift S and say cursor to selected. Then I'm going to hit period and go 3D cursor. Basically, I want to rotate this bone around this 3D cursor, and that's what that little process does there. I'm going to go rotate around the x-axis 90 degrees, so it's pointing up. Okay, and then when I go, so th that I did that in edit mode, not in pose mode, by the way. Um, then we're going to play the animation, which is still not quite there, because as we go through this part, it's going to start rotating like that. We don't want that. So instead, I'm going to just delete the second group of keys with X, delete keyframes, and I'm going to rotate, um, I'm going to hit period again, because I don't want to rotate around the cursor anymore. Uh, medium point. Let's rotate around, not the X, uh, the Y, no, Z. I'm gonna rotate around the Z 180 this time. Right click, insert keyframe, rotation. There is ways to automatically record keys, you know, if you record, um, but this isn't a tutorial on how to use Blender, it's really. Um, and yeah, so let's now quickly play that. The reason I don't like it, how it's pointing up, is it's harder to see the root, so I prefer it the other way, but I couldn't figure out how to exactly get it that way. So let's export this, FBX, um, that one. All my settings from previously are the same. We can go in here, it's re-imported, and here's our character, and he is running pretty straight, and he's got a consistent turn, and his root is super stable. Now let's just test it in game. I've got the scene and I've just got a simple plan and script just to make sure, just for testing. 
and let me drag in that animation. Uh, where is it? That one. Let's hit play. There we go. And you can see his root here, actually. This little uh, line and the circle. You can see how stable it is now. Let me just restart that again because I lost them. All right, there we go. Really stable root, and that is absolutely perfect for what we want. Now you could take this a step further and um, you could restrict this root bone uh, so that it doesn't shift this way for this particular animation. Um, however, you wouldn't be able to do that for others. It, I don't recommend it, so you could um, not copy the X, so it just stays perfectly on that line. I don't think that's necessary, um, but it's up to you if you want to test that out. So there we go. That is how we can clean up the root. It seems like a lot of steps, but once you do it once, it's really easy to just do it again and again, um, and it's going to get you the best results, especially if you're using mocap. Uh, if you have some really waggly root roots in your cut clips it might be worth doing that for them as well thank you all for watching uh, i'll see you next time